So guys, now let us contrast the difference between semaphore and mutex so that you would clearly understand that what is the difference between mutex and semaphore and how to decide whether for a given problem statement you need to make use of mutex or you need to make use of semaphore, right? If you understand the semaphores and mutex as well, you would be able to clearly take a decision that in which problems you need to make use of semaphores and in which problem it is beneficial to simply use mutexes and do not overcomplicate your problem using semaphores. This is something that actually comes by practice and by experience. So as you can see on the slide, we have divided the slide into two parts on the left hand side shows the usage of mutex, whereas the right side of the slide shows the usage of semaphores, right? Now you can see that on the left hand side, we have these horizontal arrows. These horizontal arrows represents the beginning of the critical section and ending of the critical section, right? Similarly, on the right hand side, we have critical section begin and critical section end, right? Now, let us focus on mutexes. In other words, we are actually revising the concept of mutex here because shortly we will going to compare the semaphore's functionality with the mutexes, right? So in case of mutexes, if the thread T1 tries to enter into the critical section, it locks the mutex, right? And if the lock on the mutex is available, the thread T1 manages to enter into the critical section and execute, right? So in a way, mutexes say only yes or no, either you are allowed to enter into critical section or not, right? So here the permit number, there is something called permit number and the permit number represents the number of threads or execution units which are allowed to enter into the critical section protected by mutex. So in case of mutex, the permit number is one, right? One means at most one thread can execute inside the critical section after grabbing a lock on the mutex, right? So if the thread T1 is executing inside this critical section and if the thread T2 arrives and tries to enter into the critical section, we already know that the thread T2 would going to be blocked, right? And it would stay blocked until the thread T1 exit out of the critical section and unlock the mutex, right? So permit number of mutex is one. But the story of semaphore is slightly different. Whenever we create a semaphore, we have to specify a non-negative or positive integer, right? This positive integer is the permit number of that semaphore. So in this example, let us say that we have a critical section which is protected by the semaphore, right? And let us suppose that we have a semaphore which is defined with permit number or this n value equal to 3. So it simply means that when the thread T1 arrives and tries to enter into the critical section, the semaphore would allow the entry of this thread T1 into the critical section, right? Similarly, if the thread T2 arrives and tries to enter into the critical section, the semaphore would allow to execute thread T2 inside the critical section, right? Because the permit number of the semaphore we have assumed as 3. Similarly, if the thread T3 arrives, semaphore again allows the thread T3 to enter in the critical section and execute, right? But if the thread T4 arrives, now the semaphore has been completely exhausted, the thread T4 would be blocked from entering into the critical section. The semaphore would not allow thread T4 to enter into the critical section, right? So this value and represents the permit number of a semaphore, right? Now in this explanation, you can see that mutexes is nothing but it is a special case of semaphore. If you initialize this semaphore with value 1, that is with permit number equal to 1, then in terms of functionality, your semaphore is exactly same as mutex, right? It is for this reason that mutexes is also called binary semaphores and it is an interview question right if you initialize the semaphore with permit value equal to one then your semaphore behaves exactly as mutex 
So the takeaway from this discussion is that that permit number is something which is an integer value. In case of mutex, the permit number is fixed, which is one. In case of semaphores, the permit number is user defined and can be specified by user for any non-negative value x, right? And by definition, permit number is the number of execution units which are allowed to enter into the critical section and execute concurrently. Now, one point here I would like to mention here is that, that here in the critical section, in case of semaphores, we are allowing n number of execution units to execute concurrently, right? Does that mean that if this critical section is being executed by more than one thread, concurrently would it cause the problem of invariance, right? Would it corrupt the data structure? Would it lead to those problems which unprotected execution of multiple threads in the critical section leads to? The answer is no. Here we have an assumption that the critical sections which are protected by semaphores are of a special property that they can be concurrently executed by n number of execution units concurrently without causing any problems which concurrent execution of threads in the normal scenario leads to. So we have an assumption here. So whenever you use semaphores, your critical section is of the nature that whenever it is allowed to be executed by multiple execution units concurrently, then your program would not lead to any problems. So for example, one such real example of such a critical section is, for example, let's say you have a computer system and you want some 10 users to log in into this computer system using remote login, right? So you want not more than 10 users to log in into this computer system at the same time. So this computer system becomes the critical section and we already know that multiple users can remote login into some remote server at the same time, right? So this is one example where you would protect your resource which is this computer system or server and you would put an upper limit on number of users that can log in into this computer system, right? So all 10 users can actually remotely log in into this computer system and they will just work fine. The computer system would not going to break because it is so designed. It can handle 10 remote logins at the same time, right? So here the critical section has a property that 10 users can log in into the system and work at the same time. So this is one example where you would make use of semaphores to limit the number of users that can remotely log in to your computer system at the same time.